and we are back on the Indie Boys Racing Podcast. That was a little bit of a scuffed intro, I'm not going to lie, but how are we doing today, guys? This is Tristan Greider, joined with my co-host, uh, Daniel Cheney and Justin Cox. Episode 38 of the Indie Boys Racing Podcast with Marion Phoenix and with Burnout Sports. Justin, how are you doing today, brother? Man, I'm doing pretty swell. Um, I thought Talladega well. was actually pretty good, so... Uh, like and I think Singapore was all right. It, it was pretty entertaining because of the safety car action. But I, even outside of that, I thought the racing was genuinely all right. But um, I thought Talladega was pretty cool. Um, outside of racing, I guess my life is pretty all right. <laughs> Classes are cool. Um, love to yeah. hear. Love to hear. So yeah, I think everything's pretty cool over here in Justin's corner. So uh, Daniel, let's hear about your corner, buddy. Well, I am not sick anymore, so I am vibing, chilling, or whatever you want to say. I don't know why my immune system has decided to crap the bed since I became an RA, but uh, I don't have strep anymore, so we're vibing on that front. There you go. It was a pretty solid weekend of racing. I was not able to watch much of NASCAR. I didn't get to watch any of Cup, actually. Oh, wow. I just had to I had to keep up with it on my phone. Sheesh. Um but I did get to watch the second half of F1. Singapore was pretty solid, at least the half that I saw. So I enjoyed the weekend of racing. I enjoyed seeing that people enjoyed it. Because obviously when I can't see a race, I like to view social media and see kind of what the general perception is. And the perception was pretty positive of Talladega. So um, love to see that. Yeah. I'm excited to keep talking about this weekend with y'all. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you're looking at my hair... There's no more bun up here. There's no more bun. It's all back down. There's no more. There's no more Cinnabon up there, man. No more Cinnabon. I mean, <laughs> like indie boy, indie boys left the long hair gang this year. <laughs> we we did. really did. I mean, Tristan's hair is short now too. Like everybody deserved the long hair. That's crazy. You know what? We'll go. We'll go hat off for this episode in uh -oh. honor of uh -oh. the short uh -oh. hair gang. Uh oh, we're gonna get crazy this episode, guys. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't. My hair looks like crap today. My hair I have looks some. Like crap I have some hot. I have some hot takes uh, for this episode. Um, oh, we are gonna. Get life's crazy, pretty man. good. We are gonna. Get life's crazy, pretty man. good uh, this week. Uh, always remember, guys. You can find all of our uh, content um, at our website, which is our link tree, Indie Boys. Uh, make sure you guys buy the uh, buy the merch, IndieBoysMerch.com. And uh, make sure you guys check out BurnoutSports.com for uh, uh, for articles and uh, by Tony Donahue and on the IndyCar side and NASCAR articles by myself. It's going to be a good one. Let's hop into everyone's favorite news segment in the world, Motorsport Media. Okay, let's go ahead and start on the NASCAR side of things. Going to start in the truck series. A uh, little bit of an update on Jordan Anderson. He has been released from the hospital and is now just recovering from uh, from burns. So that is really good to hear. Um, Larry McReynolds broke that news. So I'm happy that Jordan Anderson is okay after a very scary incident that was inches away from being catastrophic uh so it's good to see that jordan anderson is okay did you notice that in some of like the pictures from the broadcast and stuff it looked like his suit was burned off on i think it was his right arm like mm -hmm. i think it could be wrong I, I, it might have been the suit design but from a distance it looks like because like the other arm is black like it, it's black like you can mm -hmm. see the fire suit but it, like on his right arm it looks like it's kind of burnt off so it's crazy i did not uh, notice that yeah I'd have to yeah, I didn't either. I don't know. I don't know. I, I saw pictures and people were tweeting about it. I, I don't know if it was actually just a suit design that makes it look like that or something, but it really does look like that, honestly. So mm. All I know is that uh, Good Morning America tried to capitalize on the fact that something <laughs> Dude, bad happened. After, yeah. Uh, and then they put pictures of uh, Myatt Snyder instead of Jordan, Jordan Anderson. Anderson. And yeah. they tried to tie it to the next gen. Yeah, they were they like, yeah, the next gen has been having some issues with concussions. So here's they, a video of a crash, and here's pictures of the driver, and it wasn't him, and it wasn't even uh, next gen. It was literally it trucks. Just, it was something it just that you. it was something that happened in trucks. They used an Xfinity driver to profile it, and then they used the topic of the cup cars. <laughs> like, yeah, they yeah. just it just proved to you yeah. that they did not do any research and they don't care actually. Yeah. So it's cool. We'll just the yeah. actual people that cover this kind of stuff will keep reporting on it. So that's all that I care about. <laughs> I, I literally think good. they I think they looked up Jordan Anderson racing. And then just saw pictures of Mike Snyder driving for Jordan Anderson racing. Yeah. And they were like, oh, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, they probably did that. 
All right, let's go Xfinity, guys. Um, so, obviously, Roval weekend coming up, so we're going to see a lot of people um, doing some uh, some road course rigging. First one is uh, F1, uh, former F1 driver, current NASCAR uh, road course ringer, uh, Daniel Kvyat is uh, making his Xfinity Series debut with Sam Hunt Racing. He'll be driving that 26. Um, there were some rumors if it was going to be Ferrucci, but it's going to be Kvyat. So, uh, super exciting there. Um, Kaz Grala is going to drive the 34 for Jesse Wuji Motorsports at the Roval. And, of course, just a friendly reminder that Marco Andretti will be driving the 48 for Big Machine Racing this weekend. And Let's Sage Karam will be in the and Sage Karam will be in the O2 uh, for our motorsports. Hmm. So you guys can check out a full list of all of the road course ringers at NASCAR.com. But just wanted to let you guys know that. You can also follow um, Burnout Sports for the article that will be out uh, by the time that this episode is posted um, about me talking about um, the IndyCar and open wheel, um, the open wheel uh, takeover in NASCAR over the last couple of, uh, couple of seasons. All right, Cup Series news. Let's talk stuff that happened a couple weeks ago. William Byron has been fined 25 points and $50,000 for spinning Denny Hamlin under caution. Um, that appeal will be heard this Thursday. So we will report on that next week for all of the news that's going on there. Uh, you have a Byron flag literally in the back. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I know. I know. I know. Like if that. you listen to last week's episode, you know my take on it. I'm just joking right now. So. <laughs> uh, at the same time, Ty Gibbs has been fined 25 points and $75,000 for slamming into Ty Dillon on pit road. These points go towards the Cup Series uh, ride that Ty Gibbs has not his Xfinity Series venture. However, um, since he is a repeat appender, offender of hitting people on pit road earlier this season, he did that in the Xfinity series with no, with um, Sam Mayer. Um, oh, Gibbs yeah. uh, will get fined twenty five thousand more than Byron. Yeah, remember Mike Tyson Gibbs, bud. <laughs> Mike Tyson Gibbs. <laughs> oh yeah, shout out to Mike. Shout I guess Mike. I Sorry forgot. That. I forgot the context. <laughs> yeah. Episode fourteen. How can I ever forget? That was the first time we had Stingray on. That's true. True. And That's also uh, true. let's talk some one offs. Uh, Connor Daly, um, IndyCar yeah, car driver for, for Ed Carpenter Racing, is going to be making his Cup Series debut this weekend at the Let's Charlotte Roval with the revival of the Money Team Racing. That's right, they're not extinct, guys. They are still here, yeah. and that 50 car <laughs> is going to be sponsored by Dude, Bit Nile. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's everything it's I've ever wanted. It's a beautiful wanted. scheme. Oh it's my a beautiful god, scheme. it's beautiful. Do you think this could like possibly revive the Money Team a little more? Maybe oh, get them into I think more for sure with. With uh, Connor Daly um, doing what he does, I mean, he's ran in the Xfinity series. He's ran in the Truck series I now, doing one offs. Yeah, he ran, really? yeah he ran in the Truck series. Yeah, he ran in the Truck series. He a couple seasons ago, he ran in the Truck series with Nice Motorsports, uh, Las Vegas. Um, last season, uh, not last season, uh, about four years ago, he ran the Xfinity series at Road America with Roush Fenway back when they had an Xfinity oh, series. Oh, he uh, did. I forgot. And, uh, wow. Uh, okay. Just a NASCAR, uh, NASCAR uh, <laughs> expert here. Ah, okay, okay. My sorry, fault. Guys. I didn't sorry. even realize that. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. But uh, Connor Daly going to be making his long-awaited Cup Series start. Um, so that is super exciting. Um, really excited to see what Daly can do on the Roval configuration. Dude, I'm just um, hoping that car isn't awful because I genuinely want to see him. Maybe not like contend because obviously I don't. Think I could he's definitely see Daly getting in the top 25 in that I'd, machine. I don't see it really I, going above that. I'd like to see him competing somewhere like in like the 10 to 20 range, if possible. I don't see it happening, but I'd really like to see it. Yeah, I guess I guess we will see. Um, TMT Racing returning with the Bit Nile 50 with Connor Daly. And so it's gorgeous. There's, Three uh, IndyCar drivers that are going to be making Cup starts, uh, not Cup starts, NASCAR um, uh, National Touring Series starts this weekend with Daly, Andretti, and Kara. If only we could have got Ferrucci in there, we could have got the perfect four. That'd be awesome. But it's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, let's talk some 2023 news. Beard Motorsports, which is the part-time team that Brandon Gone ran for for literal decades. That's 62. Um, they will return part-time in 2023. Um, for the super speedways, Noah Gregson ran for them uh, these past two seasons. Um, and last race at Talladega, um, we had 
uh, Justin Allgaier run for them because Gregson was filling in in the 48. Alex Bowman is out with injury on concussion-like symptoms, and we do not know yet whether or not he'll be running this weekend at the Roval, but he did miss Talladega. So right now, Bowman is 54 points below the cut line for not running at Talladega. And pretty much this is season ending. If you looked at the crash that Bowman had, there's no reason why he should be having a concussion. Mm. Uh, the in-car audio uh, said that Bowman, he goes, that's the hardest I've ever hit anything. I don't know how this car is still running. And his spotter said, uh, his spotter, uh, Kevin Hamlin, said that this is the just the hardest part, that he hit the sweet spot of these cars that is just a safety precaution, which is the exact same spot that Kurt, Kurt Busch hit at Crazy. Uh, but now for a little bit of happy news. I talked about this last week with Jay. I said this is probably going to happen, and it did happen. Announced today by Jordan Bianchi and The Athletic that A.J. Allmendinger will return to the NASCAR Cup Series full-time in 2023 with College Racing. Man, I am just on a roll here with calling these things. Kyle Busch to RCR. Man, I called that. A.J. Allmendinger going to the Cup Series full-time. Called that. Uh, let's see uh, if we can... I can call this next thing regarding Call of Racing, and that is that they have announcement coming up in two days on October 5th. We don't know if this is going to happen uh, for sure, but my next prediction is that the third Call of Racing car will be Chandler Smith in the Xfinity Series. I think that the 16 will be Chandler Smith because I believe he's going to leave the Toyota Racing Development because they don't have seats right now. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. He just, and currently... Um, he's not locked in yet to the next round of the playoffs, but currently he is the points leader in the truck series. And I think he deserves to go to the expanding series and a Smith is winning the championship this year. I've said it for a while. And, uh, I think sh now that we know that Zane is going to be running uh full-time again in trucks next season, part-time in uh cup and Xfinity, I think Chandler gets the, the bump up and he'll take the 16 That's fair. in AJ's replacement. All right, that's all I have on the NASCAR side as normally the most news in the NASCAR side. Let's go ahead and move it over to Daniel with some IndyCar. All righty. So first, we're going to start off with some Indy lights. So first of all, Daniel Frost will be returning to h and Motorsports next year in 2023, uh, adding to just their gigantic roster of drivers they're going to have next year. Like... <laughs> That's insane. Eight drivers. Interesting move. We'll we'll see if it pays off. Sorry, I couldn't get the the direct quote, Tristan. I know it's one of your favorite movies, <laughs> but um, you know, hey, hey, the spirit was there. The spirit was there. It was. There. Um, <laughs> and so Daniel Frost will be back, and I think that's a good move because I think it was way too early for him to try to find a seat. In IndyCar, and I think plus he only ever really ran well at the first Grand Prix this season. At yeah. Indy. So, and I don't want to say that was a fluke win, but a little bit of a. Um, I think he'll be more competitive next season. <laughs> I think he he might maybe not to the full extent, but I'd like to see him kind of have somewhat of what we all predicted Linus Lundquist to have this year, because he won once the year prior, and then was coming back and could potentially be like the focal point of the team. So I'd like to see what happens with that. Um, and other Indy Lights news, Uncos Hollinger Racing is going to return to Indy Lights with two cars. Um, I don't believe any drivers have been announced. So we'll see what happens with that. Again, Uncos is like, they're kind of weird in Indy Lights because they're not really competitive. Yeah. But, Do you know who I think this is? I think this is going to be Reese Gold going to Indy Lights, in my opinion. I think this maybe. will be Reese Gold. I think he'll... Uh, I mean, I can't remember if he is in USF or if he is in uh, if he's in pros. Mm -hmm. I think he's in pros. But I think this will be Reese Gold moving up to Indy Lights. That's just my opinion. It's a fair call. I give you that. That's, a, that's yeah. honestly a very fair call. So I don't know who to predict for it. Because with the Indy Lights, it's... It's kind of difficult to predict like who will move into the Indy Lights besides just the champion of the other series, which we've already seen, Sanath Andretti. So 
I don't know. I'm just gonna wait to see what happens. I'm not gonna speculate too much too much on who it could be, who it might be, who it's gonna be. Um, but whenever they do announce who's gonna be in their two cars, we will let you guys know. But as of now, nothing like that has been announced. Um, moving on to the IndyCar side of things. Stingray Rob is reportedly all in on IndyCar. Obviously, when we talked to him, he made it very clear if there's a ride available, that's plan A. And if there's no rides available, which is kind of hard to tell right now, because we're in a spot where the seats, as of now, are available. But drivers that are speculated to be in said rides have not confirmed if they're like out of the running or going to be in the you know what i mean it's it's a weird spot in the silly season where we think the seats are taken but technically the seats aren't right so we'll have to wait and see if there will be any openings for stingray rob um he teased with us that he could potentially be testing with some teams but nothing official has been announced as of now um moving on Ben Peterson will be in IndyCar next season with AJ Foy Racing. We don't technically know what car yet. They have yet to say what car. It's predicted it'll be the the 14. I think it's going to be the 14. I, I think, think everybody be- everybody thinks it's going to be the 14. The only reason why that it hasn't technically been announced what car number he's going to yet is just because contract negotiations are still going mm-hmm. on with Kellett. And... And technically, we could see that third car come back because they stopped running the third car because of sponsorship. And you know why they signed Ben Peterson? Sponsorship. Sponsorship. (laughs) Plus, I guarantee you they'll give Peterson... uh, I mean, they'll give Kellett first dibs, obviously, and he's Kellett's going to choose the four. But... um, Yeah, I would think. But Peterson, I guarantee you, will get his uh, his, um, choice over the 14 or the 11, which he'll choose. 14 so i mean like, why wouldn't you why would yeah. you why would you not choose the aj for 14 the just, only reason yeah. i the only way i could see him not being in the 14 and being in the 11 is if they have the 14 and they have lena's lundquist mm-hmm. um the only reason lena's lundquist is still in contention with the foyt seat is because of the whole honda engine thing um if you heard us talking about this two weeks ago you know what we're talking about to break it down simply, Honda didn't have they didn't want to give out more engines than they already were giving out as of now. Um, but and so this is why um, so HMD Motorsports wanted to have two two Indy cars as part of their Dale Coin kind of combination partnership. Initiative, so Dale Coin, yeah, yeah Dale Coin Racing would have three Indy car rides if this went through. The thought process behind this being they want Linus Lundquist in this third car. But if they can't get that Honda engine, they can't have a third car. Obviously, that makes sense. This Honda engine is still kind of in limbo because we don't know what Chip Ganassi Racing is going to do. Because as of now, they only have three cars due to the Jimmy Johnson retirement, or at least not (laughs) full-time returning. Mm. So we've yet to hear if Chip Ganassi Racing is going to have four cars, if they're going to have three cars, and then Dale Coyne would be able to have that third engine. Um, or even if Dale, Dale Coyne could get that engine, if it's even a possibility. Even if it's out there, Honda might still not want to expand too much. Um, and so that's the only way I could see Linus going to Chevy to be with AJ Foyt Racing in the 14 for at least one year before another spot opens up yeah you know <laughs> it's for those so, listening tristan held up the certified <laughs> dalton kellett moment hat <laughs> it'll come in the i guarantee you uh, man's is in the little bit of a he's in a little bit of a uh life thing right now he's getting married. yeah he's yeah he's kind of so, getting married <laughs> i would i would say that uh dalton's pushing off the contract announcement um until he gets married uh or at least think. until I would think. yeah like i'm just saying like as a as a guy i understand it when you have a lot of stuff going on in your life you're pushing off announcements for big things until the very end like <laughs> i i get it so i bet you we see 
a three car team next season at AJ Foyt. First guy is going to be um, Ben Peterson, obviously. Second guy will be Dalton Kellett. And that third guy, I don't think it's going to be Linus Lundquist, honestly. I think he'll go to Dale Coyne Racing. Um, well, that, like that's if the engine thing. If the I think it'll be a partnership car between Chip Ganassi Racing and HMD Motorsports. That's just my opinion. Um, I don't know if it'll be a Dale Coyne car. I think it, like, we'll see, like, maybe a partnership with a couple. I don't know. I don't know. Because HMD Motorsports has said in the past that they are not um glued to deal coin racing um that's actually a fair that's fair if a, fair. if a better partnership i mean come on think about uh steinbecker right like they were their own kind yeah. of yeah, steinburner they were their own kind of thing before andretti uh partnered with them these are things that happen there are mergers that happen and that's all really we got to say about that but uh one more big news right daniel uh yeah the, so we do close. have one last bit of news. Um, it is being reported from Racer.com that Alex Pillow, despite all this big stuff that happened this season over what he's going to do next season, apparently just after next season, he's still going to Aaron McLaren no matter what. That is that is the report. Um, so I don't know. I Like it's it crazy. makes sense. Like I figured it would. But, like you would think they would just wait till just next season when it's actually like a real possibility instead of just being like yeah pretty much like we're just gonna wait out this season and yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be where you all thought i was gonna be anyways but they're already like yeah we're going with this now like we're rolling we're we're pulling a tyler reddick right now let's just say that yeah (laughs) so i think tony donahue said it best really with that lame duck season incoming for the 10 like I think I wouldn't was... say lame duck. I think it'll be similar to this season where he just gets like one win and then he's like consistent. You mean the last race of the season? We're gonna see. Yeah, that but um, may, he, it may not. It might not be the last race that he wins, but I I don't think it'll be a championship season by any means. It could be like with any car, you never know. Really, mm-hmm. it it could be anybody winning. Um, but only time will tell. Um. Do I don't think... know how broken this Polo Ganassi relationship is going to be if it's not already. Do you but... do you guys think that Alex going to McLaren, uh, era McLaren, um, is a downgrade from Chip Ganassi? Uh, I mean, this season for sure. I mean, you look at the that three, I, the, including Polo. There were three cars in contention for the championship with two weeks left in the season. McLaren, how many did they have in contention in the final race of the se- final two races of the season? One. They had Pato, and he was the only even, one that was, was he? Really, I don't even think he was, was in that seven. I don't. I, don't that, I thought he was. Yeah, in the but seven. no. But the last two weeks, it was only like five, It was only five. It was only five or six. He was part. He was part of the Du Bois seven. I will yeah. say uh, that he was in the seven. Um, but he was he was the first, first to go from that seven. He was in the five, but he was the first to go from the seven. He was uh, the deep in the seven yeah. sorry i'm referencing the boys right now like this is fun uh but um we'll see how it goes this season but i think what sucks about this is that felix rosenquist is already going to be fighting for his right again and that really pisses me off because we know rossi has a multi-year deal we know Pato has a year a deal till 2025 unless they move him to f1 which i don't i see happening less and less every single day yeah um, especially with the fact that they just um, signed Oscar Piastri at McLaren. I think that this is they're already trying to give the boot to Rosenquist, which kind of sucks. But, but but as a counterpoint, the Rosenquist thing was so disappointing this season because he was still tied to a McLaren contract, and so it was just in limbo whether he'd be an IndyCar or Formula E. Yeah. After this season, he's not. I think he can sign with anybody else. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like he's being just kicked out of any car as a whole because that's why that's what made it so disappointing this year was that the whole the man who had either, the second most polls of the season yeah. how many polls did Rosquist have three two or three two. right I think two but well, we I, were I at we were at one of the races where Rosenquist got the poll I think that was at uh the second Indy yeah which race uh he got the poll but I don't know but uh it, yeah. I I do think yeah, he had two. It's this not season. gonna Texas yeah. and Indy Road Course. Texas, yeah. I knew it was an oval. 
Um, yeah. but, but I'm glad hey, he's I, not. It's not going to be as sad of a situation for Felix because it's not like he's not guaranteed a ride somewhere else. Because I think everybody in the paddock knows he's super talented and wants to give him a shot if they're available to. It was just with all this Polo stuff, he was going to be shafted from IndyCar as a whole if it went through because he was already tied to a contract. So luckily, I don't think that'll be the case this next silly season. Yeah. All right, Jay, take it us. Uh, take us to F one. Okay, okay, let's get it started. Um, so, let's get it started. <laughs> so as I talked about last week a little bit, um, Alfa Romeo had an announcement. My prediction was that Zhou Guan Yu will continue with Alfa Romeo F one in twenty twenty three, and that prediction came true. So I mean, You're that wasn't a very like, that wasn't like a very hard prediction either. So <laughs> it was pretty predictable. Yeah. They posted a tiger. Yeah, Graham. they made it pretty easy. But um, all right. So the next thing is that there will be six sprint races in the 2023 F1 season. So we don't know exactly where those are going to be at just yet. But I I don't think there's an official release on where they're going to be at. I didn't see one. Didn't. But yeah, um, they didn't release anything. But there is going to be six. Um, what's your guys' take on having six sprint races? I honestly don't care. Like, I don't care at all. Like, I'm going to tune in to the race, and I'll follow who gets the pole. Mm. That's it. Like, sure, they give a couple extra points during these sprint races, but I'm not going to watch them. Like, I don't care. Um, they, I don't have the... I don't have Sky Sports on my remote, so I can't just <laughs> and, like go over and do that, but... I, I really don't care. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Daniel? You don't like it? I don't really care for the sprint <laughs> like, yeah. I don't they care don't, either. They don't take anything away, but they don't add anything, in my opinion. Like, they're just there. In my opinion, it's like a stage for NASCAR. That's kind of what it feels like. Which are unnecessary. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, it's like, yeah, stages are, stages are unnecessary on super speedways and road courses. I think that they're necessary everywhere else. I say road courses. St- stages are unnecessary the way that NASCAR utilizes them currently. Fair. Is that is that a better way to, to put it? That's that's fair. Yeah, that's better. As a concept, I think I like they're a the good idea. Yeah. I think they're great. The concept is a good idea. I just don't the think the execution. Is not I'm always it. I don't think yeah. we should have a stage break in the truck <laughs> yeah. series like 10 laps. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, what was it at road courses this season? They would run five laps like of a green, five, and, that would be, yeah. and that would be stage one. Mm-hmm. And like, then, dog, like, you barely this, tested your tires this, at that point. Even this past weekend at Talladega, we ran, I think, 15 laps, and then we had a stage break. Something like that. Like, yeah, it was pretty close. That's crazy. Yeah, and, there like, there the stage only... would be, like, 15 laps, 15 laps, and then, like, 60. Yeah, because there was only that, what? Like, just, wasn't there only like 94 laps in the truck race or something like that? Something like that. I, I mean, so. the, the Xfinity race, I think, had one th- 113. 113. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the Cup race had 188. Like normal. But like, but yeah, that, in Cup, it makes sense because they did 60, 60, 68. In yeah. the trucks, it would be like 15, 12, like, yeah. or something like that. <laughs> and then 45 right at the end to make a long uh, last stage. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, yep. To keep going. Um, the further reports emerging that Red Bull could have exceeded the budget cap last season in F1. Um, potential sanctions could include a hefty fine and being restricted in development for 2023. Also, by the way, I didn't mention in the beginning, this news, all this news is coming from Formula Racers on Twitter. So make sure to go follow them, check them out. So, um, yeah, but yeah, so apparently Red Bull exceeded the cost cap, um, the budget cap for last season that they won the championship with Max Verstappen. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah, pretty. So we're going to see what's going to go on from here. But the main thing is probably going to be that they're just going to get really, really fined and that they're probably just, as they said, get restricted in development for 2023. So um, I wish there might be something a little different that could happen. But – we're not going to talk Mickey about Mickey Mouse that. championship moment. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that right now. So um, let me keep going. Um, so actually, earlier this week, um, it was reported that Alpha Tori has signed Nick DeVries for 2023. 
So this means that Gasly has likely signed for Alpine. What? Yeah. Nick DeVries. Where, where the heck? Where the? Where did you? Oh. Nick DeVries signed with AlphaTauri. Wait. So this means. That means Gasly is going to Alpine. Logan Sargent is going to Williams, baby. That's what that <laughs> means. That's all I hear. That's all I. Hear. Oh. That's all I hear in this ear right here, bro. I hope Logan Sargent. I hope that's what I'm hearing. But bro, that, that, I thought he was a shoo in. <laughs> no yeah. freaking way. Yeah, Nick DeVries is going to AlphaTauri. So really they must have really liked what he did in Monza. So which it was pretty impressive. He hopped in the car and beat Nicholas Latifi by a lot of time and got points. So Bro, to beat the goat that <laughs> takes a lot. Okay. We're going to keep going. Um, reports. Uh, this is something we've been kind of reporting on. A li- I've been reporting on a little bit throughout our F1 segments here on Motorsports Media. Um, reports suggest that Porsche will not enter F1 in any capacity now. They're unwilling to seriously consider any teams beyond Red Bull. So we're probably not going to see Porsche at all in F1 in the future. Unless Whatever. maybe there's a really good deal coming along. Because I think, honestly, they want to own a team. In F1, they don't want to mm. just be an engine partner yeah, that, or something. That Porsche, that Porsche merch would be sexy. It would be kind of sexy. I'm not gonna lie. I'd love to see a Porsche Haas, <laughs> yeah, Haas relationship. Oh my god, that'd, that'd be, be sexy. As shit. Oh my god, <laughs> that'd be crazy. <laughs> but no. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but no, for real, like, uh, yeah. I mean. It'd be crazy. I want to see Porsche in F1, I think, just as much as a lot of people might. I want to see, like, Jaguar in F1. I want to see, like, a bunch of other car br- exotic car I, I want to see, see Audi like- in F1. Oh, dang it. Oh. <laughs> okay. I want to see Ford make it. <laughs> okay. Ford versus okay, Chevrolet. Ford, Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari, yeah. Why well, not an American, t- American manufacturing there? Well, We'll try our best not to blow an engine every race. <laughs> that's a real Ford v Ferrari right there. <laughs> that's comedy. Okay, but no, nah, that's all uh, I got for F one. So, um, hey guys, yeah. sh- shout out to everywhere that we get our media from. Jayski is where I get all of my NASCAR media from. Uh, Racer dot com is where Daniel gets all of his uh, IndyCar uh, news from, and then Formula I'll Racers. Have to Marshall uh, Pruitt. Yeah, shout out Marshall Pruitt, shout man. Out Marshall. Um, we miss Marshall. I really Marshall. Really do miss Marshall. Marshall. Is where Jay gets all the F1 news, and I do miss Marshall too. I might have to, <laughs> might have to text him, be like, "Yo, what's up, man?" Bro, we anyway, gotta have him on the racing. Sp- we gotta see if we can get on his like the family racing show, whatever he calls it. <laughs> uh, I think we should try to get him on this show. I That's all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I I'll I'll send some emails. Okay, oh. let's see what we can do. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and transition. We got some Dega to talk about, some Singapore to talk about. Okay, truck series. I'm pretty much just going to talk about the finishes, okay? Yeah, valid. (laughs) The most chaotic finish of the weekend um, follows a finish that literally happened the exact same way last season, except NASCAR didn't treat it the exact same way. So... I'll rewind to last season. It's the final lap at Talladega in the Truck Series. John Hunter Nemechek is leading with Tate Fogelman following close behind him. As they're coming to the flag, we see a big crash in the back. Tate Fogelman turns John Hunter Nemechek then at the front, and him and Tyler Hill wreck across the finish line with Tate Fogelman just barely edging out the win over Tyler Hill. Fogelman got his first career win, and the crazy thing is that we haven't really seen Fogelman race this season because he got booted from his ride at On Point Motorsports after uh, poor results. But this season, literally the exact same thing happens. We see Corey Heim get loose a little bit farther in the back. We see a crash at the front involving Ben Rhodes and Christian Eckes, and we see uh, Brett Holmes... Uh, beat Matt DiBenedetto to the line by two one thousandths of a second. Now, what is the difference between these two incidents? 2021, Tate Fogelman and Tyler Hill, we saw no caution. They raced to the start finish line. We saw a photo finish at the line. This season, Brett Holmes beats Matt DiBenedetto by literally the closest time in Truck Series history at two one thousandths of a second. An eyelash. But we see a caution 
literally less than 500 feet from the start finish line, which throws off everything. And if you know how close, how much can change Talladega in 500 feet, then you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, every Talladega race, when they're coming to the final lap, when they're coming down that final short shoot, remember, start finish line is not in the middle of the travel. It's on the next short straight. <laughs> every time. So every you're time. always reminded. <laughs> And with the terrible commentary from Vince Welsh, I feel like this situation <laughs> wasn't presented better. Because, okay, how, okay, I'm watching this race. Me and my girlfriend are watching it. Shout out to my girlfriend, Megan, for sitting through three Talladega races with me this weekend. Because you didn't have to, but you did. <laughs> Love you, baby. Anyway, so, first off, as they're coming to the flag, I can see clearly... And the caution lights are out. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, Matt DiBenedetto won this race. But on the broadcast, they're like, Brett Holmes wins it. Oh, Brett Holmes. And all three of them are saying, how stupid do you have to be to not be able to see those caution lights? Because you're watching the exact same broadcast <laughs> that I'm watching. The exact same one. How clueless do you have to be? And you know that they're saying it in their ears. But, like, they were going on about Brett Holmes getting his first win for, like, two minutes. And literally driving me insane. I was so pissed off and the entire time i'm yelling at the screen i'm like listen you're wrong just report on the right thing and just bothered me uh so finally they declare matt de benedetto as the winner nothing against matt de benedetto uh the person that is ahead at the time of caution should be awarded the win he's right um matt de benedetto won this race however i'm pissed at nascar why am i pissed at nascar because you enforce wanting them to race back to the line, but you throw a caution 500 feet away. That pisses me off. Um, it just annoys me because they didn't do it at all last season. And it's stupid. And I want to know what you guys should think about it. Should on the final lap at Talladega, if they're on the front stretch, should they nullify cautions? Should they just not throw cautions if they're coming to the checkered flag? It depends on the severity, is what I think. I don't think that Rick was necessarily severe enough. Now, um, I can't remember who it was, but they did get pinballed around, pinballed around a lot in the background. That it was a uh, Corey Heim. Corey Heim, Corey Heim mm -hmm. yeah. He got pinballed Heim, around yeah. a lot, and it was it was kind of bad. But I don't think the severity of that accident. And I'm not saying it wasn't severe. No cars, so. no cars got up in the air. Yeah, no cars got no in the air. Um, like. I think they should have let them race the line, honestly. Um, I think it was kind of dumb to throw the caution right at the start-finish line. And I think that's dumb anywhere, not even just Talladega. Like, I think that's dumb when they did it at uh, what was it, the All-Star race early this season. All-Star race. Yeah, I think that's dumb anywhere. Like, if something happens and it's, like, literally coming to the line, just let them finish the race. Because after that, everybody's going to be slowing down anyway. You're going to be able to get safety vehicles and everything out to the people because all the other cars are going to be on the opposite side of the track. So I personally think they should have let them race to the line. Um, I think it was a dumb call by NASCAR. Um, and I think the announcers kind of overhyped Brett Holmes and then completely changed the subject of the situation that it wasn't. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, I don't mm -hmm. know. Daniel? That's, that's pretty much what I think. It's just like, in some cases, I think it makes sense to just like call it right when it happens but it would i feel like they just threw it way too early when in some situations where they're very comparable they didn't and i just think we need like the consistency there you know what i mean i mean i put it most i am literally comparing it so in my article that i wrote for burnout i am literally comparing it to tate fogelman like the tate fogelman win from last season, we all remember they crashed across the start finish line. We didn't get a post race interview with Fogelman because he was in the care center. There was no caution. They didn't even think about the caution. Like, and those, there were some pretty hard. John Hunter Nemechek hit the wall pretty damn hard last season, and they didn't call a caution. I mean, did they? Did they? I don't, I can't remember. This has been kind of a while. It was 2020. Did they throw a caution for Ryan Newman? Come into no. the line and flipping. Did they throw no. a caution for that? No. 
I mean, the, like in that in that case, that makes sense because he literally flipped and got literally mm. railed by Corey LaJoy. Not in yeah, but um, <laughs> yo, <laughs> but he got railed Dang, by man. Corey. Pause. <laughs> he got railed oh, by up. Corey Wait LaJoy. Wait a minute. In, What's up, man? What? <laughs> he got railed by Corey LaJoy in the top part of his car, and you don't throw a caution because you let them race to the line. In that sense, I would have been completely fine with the caution because. Either way, like it was either gonna be Blaney or Denny winning, because those two were right there at the neck, like neck and neck at the line anyway. So either way, race into the line that didn't really matter. But I, I, I don't know. It's just dumb. It's just and you dumb. put the same, you put it on blast as well in the 2021 Daytona 500 when Brad Keselowski hit the fence. Yeah. They did call a caution. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's stupid that they should not have th- they should not have thrown a caution when they're 500 feet from the start finish line. This is not the first time we've seen NASCAR do this in the truck series. Um, as a fan, Casey Kane won at Talladega in the Xfinity Series in 2015. He beat Regan Smith to the line by five one thousandths of a second. I don't care that Regan Smith was ahead at the time of caution. In my opinion, Brett Holmes won this race. It's not going to go down in the record berths as a Brett Holmes win, but that man stayed out of trouble all race long. I'm excited, and I hope he gets a truck series ride full-time next season because he is a hell of a driver. Um, congratulations on a second-place victory, um, and congratulations to Matt Denadetto. Um I am not a guy. I'm a guy that roots for the underdog, and Brett Holmes is an underdog. I don't think Matt Benedetto is an underdog, but... Um, Matt DiBenedetto gets his first career uh, national uh, NASCAR Touring Series win. So uh, congratulations to him. Let's go ahead and go on the Xfinity Series side of things. Going to talk about the finish of this one. Finally, AJ Allmendinger has won on a super speedway. Let's just applaud. This man is always leading when it comes to the start-finish line and always gets effed over. It's really freaking good to see. (laughs) And I'm happy for my man, the man who doesn't wear hats gets out of the car and just celebrates with the fans. He doesn't care what people think, and I'm so proud of him. He still says that he hates this kind of racing, and I'm not going to lie. I love it and hate it too, and he has a love-hate relationship with this kind of racing, but I bet you he was celebrating winning at Talladega. Um, I want to talk about the second-place finisher, Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer is scarily becoming a very good racer like Mm -hmm. he's always kind of been good like truck series obviously his first truck series start he won um arca he was always great this season these past two seasons really he's been last season was kind of rough for sam mayor but this season playoff driver currently uh in the top eight in points sam mayor is scarily making himself a championship four contender and I want you guys to tell me really quick, is Sam Mayer going to make the 2022 championship four? I'm going to start this one with Jay. Yeah. In the Xfinity. Yeah, it, that's a great possibility, honestly. I mean, if you can keep up the consistency and maybe even get some wins at that, like here, in, especially if he can win at the Roval this weekend, and then he mm. can get maybe a win or be really, really consistent in this next round of the uh, playoffs if he makes it. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with him not being in the championship for so. Um, I'm really looking at Martinsville, in my opinion. I think yeah. that he, if he makes it, I think he will make it out of this round. Um, I think he'll have a solid run at the Roval. I think he'll have like top 10, maybe top 15. I think he'll have a solid run at the Roval. But I'm looking at Martinsville. That's where I'm. I Sam Mayer is a short track guy. And I'm looking at Martinsville, but also he's going to have to contend with his teammate Josh Berry for that win at Martinsville. Um, But I'm looking at Martinsville for Sam Mayer. I think that'll be his telling point whether or not he makes it into the champ four. Daniel, what do you think about Sam Mayer making champ four for Xfinity? I think it's very possible, but he's going to have to, he's going to have to beat out some tough guys, some tough guys. Because, obviously, A.J. Allmendinger and Noah Gregson have already won. So they're locked in the next round. They're always going to be favorites for wins every given week. Ty Gibbs is a favorite for a win every given week. Austin Hill can just pop out of nowhere and win a race. 
Same with Josh Berry, same with Justin Allgaier. Those are the six people directly above him, the standings. I think it's very possible, but it's hard to bet against the six guys ahead of him, in my opinion. Especially someone like Justin Allgaier, who just can pick up consistency out of nowhere. Like, yeah, it's doable, but it's going to be pretty difficult for him. It's possible, though. Hey, hey, you never know. Uh, we're cheering for you over here, Sam Mayer. Though I'd love to see you. Love to see that one in the championship for. All right, Cup Series time. In my opinion, uh, the cleanest race of the weekend was the NASCAR Cup Series race at um, Talladega. Only really saw one incident uh, at the beginning of the race. Every single guy that was full time in Xfinity decided to crash. Um, yeah. With Gregson, Justin Allgaier, and um, Ty Gibbs. Um, all guy I was filling in for Noah Gregson in the 62 Gregson was filling in for Alex Bowman in the 48 Ty Gibbs filling in for Kurt Busch uh, for 2311 racing in the 23 which is originally driven by Bubba Wallace so a lot of guys filling in for a lot of guys right here and then Harrison Burton was also involved in this crash I want to talk about the finish of this one Chase Elliott steals a super speedway win in my opinion I don't think he was the best car um, I personally think he shouldn't really have like, I don't think he deserved to win this race, in my opinion. Uh, but he got up there. He got the win. Stole the win. He's the points leader. So he deserves, like, to be in that next round. And I, I didn't think there was any doubt that he was going to miss. And the thing is, he's going to go to the Roval next week and, like, have another great race, which is crazy. <laughs> so we could see back-to-back wins for Chase Elliott um, this weekend. But you never know. Uh, Chase Elliott steals uh, this one. I want to highlight some of the top finishers of this one just because some of these guys that got top tens uh, like had really good races that I just want to highlight. Uh, second place was Ryan Blaney. Chase Elliott beats Ryan Blaney at the line by, I believe, four one hundredths. You need Ryan Blaney um, to win, man. You need him to win. <laughs> I'm starting to think that Ryan Blaney is going to win himself a championship without winning a race. Like, Matt right. Crafton vibes. He's I actually he might win Phoenix and give me some Daniel Hemrick vibes. I'm not gonna lie. Third place is Michael McDowell. I thought it was gonna happen. I really thought it was gonna happen, boys. I <laughs> Michael McDowell continues an incredible season. May I point out again that he has more top tens than William Byron and Alex Bowman. <laughs> Fourth place was Ross Chastain. He proved me wrong. I th- thought Chastain was going to get involved in a big one. Never doubt. Him, Never doubt. Him and his track house racing teammate, Honestly, though, Dana like, Suarez. It seems, like, races. it seems like the driving was not aggressive, really. Mm-hmm. Like It seems like a lot of the drivers were taking care of each other this weekend. Like Because of probably like a lot of the... However, stuff. I will say Chastain was pushing Blaney during the corners. Yeah. I will say, like, I mean, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't over the top with it, like normal. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? definitely. Not. Like, he's getting I, I, he's I, getting better at what his issue was most of the season. Yeah, yeah, but I like I think every driver though, not even just like Chastain himself, like every driver like was really taking care of each other out there, like at mm-hmm. Talladega this past weekend. Then you got fifth place, uh, Jay's boy, uh, Denny Hamlin. Sixth place. Was Eric Jones Good another great day. super speedway run for him? I really he was in contention for this win. He was leading with one lap to go. Um, Same thing Todd, from earlier in the season. Yeah, just lost his line at the end. Mm-hmm. Todd Gilland gets another top ten finish. Front Row Motorsports finishes third and seventh. I couldn't be more proud of my second favorite team in NASCAR. Um, eighth place, I mentioned him earlier, but my favorite, Danny Suarez, gets himself an eighth place. Uh, ninth place was Austin Sindrick, and tenth place was Chase Briscoe. Both of those guys are fighting for a championship, and they're actually tied currently in points. However, Briscoe has more top tens this season than Sindrick, so Sindrick is currently the first driver out of the playoffs. And uh, just shouting him out, just because he finished outside of the, t- just outside the top ten, Landon Castle picks up a P11, and in that Spire Motorsports machine, very impressive. So guys, going into next week, we got a crazy one, a crazy one, Roval action. <laughs> Before we talk Roval, 
let's go ahead and put it over to Jay. <laughs> Okay. For F1. okay. So over the past weekend, we had this Singapore GP, which honestly I don't know why I'm not wearing his jersey right now. But my man Sergio Perez, chuckle, he took home the W, and I'm so happy. So uh, vamos, Checo, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, so Sergio Perez takes home the uh, the win. Charles Leclerc comes on second. Carlos Sainz third. Lando Norris fourth. Daniel Ricciardo fifth. Lance Stroll sixth. Max Verstappen seventh. Eighth is Sebastian Vettel. Ninth, Lewis Hamilton. And tenth, Pierre Gasly. Um, at the same time, if you want to talk about the standings currently, we already know who's going to win the championship. So I don't even really yeah. think I need to talk about the standings much. But I do want to make a note that Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez, after Perez winning this past race, are only two points apart in um, the championship standings. So it's going to be very interesting. And George Russell and Carlos Sainz are both in a battle as well with being a p- one point apart from 203 to 202 points. So this is going to be very interesting to see how the rest of the positions file out because we already know Max is going to win. I'm pretty sure if he wins a race at this point, he just wins the championship anyway. So He um, does. So it was like, yeah. I was like, didn't didn't they literally like have all the merch for him winning the championship, but because he just didn't have that great of a race, like yeah, they just well, because yeah, Netflix, Netflix decided that they were going to stick with Max this weekend, so Max had a crappy run. I'm yeah. not going to lie, the, the Netflix curse is real, and we've been talking about it all season. So I mean, like, so it's real. That's kind of my question, I guess. Um, do we think after this past weekend? We already know Max pretty much has a championship locked up. But do you think we might see a decline in his performance after this past weekend? I, this, is not, that's, this is not my take, of course. I'm, this is just me asking the question. He'll still care because his legacy is still on the line. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max Verstappen currently has the 10th most Grand Prix wins out of every F1 driver, I believe. Um, Maybe, yeah. Something like that. I think so. Uh, I know he has the tenth most laps led. Um, his legacy is still on the line, and if as long as there's races left in the season, and after next week at Japan, uh, which I'm so excited for, we even though it's gonna have, be at one a.m. in the morning, so I'm pissed about that. So we're gonna <laughs> stay away. But after that, we have Coda, we have Mexico, we have Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. That's it. And it's crazy that the season is almost over. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> but, um, hey, after the season's over, we get a much-deserved break. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But I think we could possibly see a decline. I'm not going to lie. I think he might want to, might want to, like, kind of, like, take a chill for the rest of the season, not really be like, I have to go out here and win because he's not going to be stressed to win a championship Kinda anymore. Like Lewis Hamilton 2019 vibes. Or was it? No, 2020 yeah, vibes. 2020 vibes, my fault. Yeah. 2020 vibes where Lewis won the championship with what, like five races left in the season? Yeah, and then he had COVID, so he didn't even race one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I think we could see a decline. Okay. Daniel? Um... I don't necessarily think he's going to like decline, but I think he might not force everything because he doesn't have to. He can be a little bit more safe now. Yeah. Um, uh, that's probably not that, he, not that he wasn't being super safe anyways, because once he's up in first place, like you didn't really have to worry about hitting into any, <laughs> to too many people. But I think he's going to like chill out a bit because he doesn't have to worry about anybody really behind him in points that's going to catch up in time i don't know i don't think he's gonna like fall off yeah but i don't i don't think he has to go out there and win every single race because he knows he doesn't have to yeah so that, that's the only reason i asked the question I, like I, I don't think he's gonna like fall off the face of the earth or something and then somehow mm-hmm. like like miraculously something happens but like like I, I just don't think he's going to be as aggressive as we normally see Max Verstappen be. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, because I think we even seen that this past weekend, honestly. Like, Because if Max Verstappen was going to win the race, he was going to go win that race. And like he really had like a really bad start. And then from there, he was just like, you know what? I, I think at that point, he was just like, I'm going to think he's smart, so I'm just going to hang out. Like, he's like, I'm just going to finish it out. So, 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of like my only topic really for this past race at t uh, Singapore. I have one. So I have that? one really quick. Shout out to Aston Martin for double podiuming, man. Oops. I mean, come on, <laughs> Lance Stroll P six. Like when Wait, I was double watching points, double points, not double yeah. podium. I'm sorry, double points. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. What I meant to say. But shout out, man. I thought that we were gonna cheekily see a uh, man. I feel like a uh, George Russell when I say the word cheeky. Um, <laughs> the most British uh, man ever. Oh my god! Did you see him like after like I think it was Mick Schumacher that cut him off. <laughs> He was like, "Oi, he out here!" And he's like, "That cheeky mo bastard!" I don't know. It was so funny. It just made me laugh. Uh, All but, yeah. is my, boy, my boy George Russell hasn't been the same since Lizzie passed. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Oh, Am I wrong? That's funny. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Are you booing me? I'm right. No. It's funny. Anyway, but double podium for, uh, for uh, sh shoot, what is it? Ferrari. And <sighs> you have one shot at it, but you don't get to. Anyway, let's go ahead and transition to a uh, new segment, guys, that we started last week. Me and Jay got some die casts to guess, and Daniel's going to guess along with us. All right. All right, Jay, you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Um. I can go first. Um, are you guys right, go. going to like go. work together or? Yeah, I think we go every other question. So let's go yeah. over the rules really quick, Daniel, because you weren't here last week. So okay. we have 10 questions. I am keeping track of the questions on my phone of how many that we have. So we each get five. However, they don't count as questions, but we both get uh, lifelines. There's three of them. Um, the first one is guess the number we cannot do guess the number until the final two questions so like nine or ten you can't do guess the number mm -hmm. you can do guess the sponsor guess the sponsor is you are told what sponsor is on the car uh -huh. and the final one if you are completely lost is show the die cast your goal is going to be to guess the die cast and the car so the driver so you have mm. to guess the driver so kind of a little bit of a variation of guess the driver that we did at the beginning of the season right right guessing a specific die cast and at the end we get to show it off yeah right. and right. uh would you rather in my personal die cast jay is signed so would you rather me show the autograph or show the sign or show the sponsor you can do autograph Okay. So, like, you'll, to... you'll work with Daniel right now, and then for years, I'll yeah. work with Daniel. And okay. Then so, then am I going first, or is Jay going first? Uh, I don't care. I I'll go first. You go first. Yeah. Go first. You right. go first. Oh, yeah. All right. You guys ask. All right. Question one. Is this car in the NASCAR series? It sure is. It's a NASCAR series car. Okay. That's question one. Daniel. Is this car a Chevy? It is not a Chevy. Ooh, okay. All right, question three. Is this car current? It is not current. Okay. So that 21, 2021 passed. Is this car a Ford? It is a Ford. Ooh, a Ford. Question five. Is this car, has this car been driven in the past decade? Yes. Okay. Then Do you want the exact date? Like the exact year? Do you think that's fine? Sure, yeah. You can do that. 2004. Ooh, okay. okay. Ford in 2004. That makes me think Roush. Ford in 2004 make Roush, Daniel. Was, so was, Penske Ford Ford was Penske Ford back Penske then? Was Penske Ford back then? Was Dodge. Penske okay, was Dodge. Yeah, I, did, I did know that. I did know that. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking of Roush. I think it was Dodge back then. Wait. No, they were Dodge. They were Dodge in 2008. Yeah, I think I think so. Okay. Well, let's just, um, let's just okay. say it's a Roush. I think it's a Roush car. Oh, do you want to do that question? I'll I'll do my question as a Roush car. You could 
figure out the question. Is or this car... Is this car... Six car? Yeah. <laughs> Is your driver Mark Martin in the uh, Mark Martin Viagra car? Viagra. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, show off I know, that I know the driver. I know the driver's Jay likes, so I had I had to had to see. All right, Jay, describe. Uh, show off the diecast. Uh, give us a little bit of backstory on it. All right, so this is apparently from the 2004 season. It is Mark Martin's Viagra car. Um, Tristan actually picked this up for me at a garage sale. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, no, this car is very beautiful. Blue, white, black. Um, I don't know if it was ran in a certain, I don't know if there was like, it was a one-off scheme or anything like that. Um, but yeah, no, I love this car. This car is absolutely beautiful. And, uh, I felt like this was a good one to kind of use for this episode. So Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. My turn. Guess that die cast. We'll start it off. Ten questions. Start it off with Jay. Is this a NASCAR? This is a NASCAR. Question two. Is this driver currently racing in NASCAR? No. Is this driver from the early to mid 2000s? Yes, but they also raced in the 2010s. Okay. But there's... they, yeah, so in the early to mid 2000s for sure. Okay. Is this car a Chevy? No. Is this Question car, five. Is this car a Dodge? Yes. <laughs> I feel like I already like like I kind of assumed I think I know who the driver is, but I don't know if I just want to make my is the is this driver like one of my yes or no questions. Guess the number now, Daniel. Guess the number. <laughs> is this car the number nine, Tristan? Yes. <laughs> is this driver Casey Kane? <laughs> Casey Kanye, no, it is not. Kanye, uh, Kanye, yeah. Kanye. Uh, yeah. Kanye? Kan Kanye, 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 Yeezy. <laughs> this <laughs> is Casey Kane, uh, I, but I want you to guess diecast. I want you to guess. Oh, okay. What diecast do you think that I have here? What's Since you guys nine? have a couple, you guys have five more questions. Is it his? Uh, is it the Mopar, the blue, like white and black Mopar nine car? No. <laughs> is it just the the is it the Budweiser that was the red and white one? It was the 2008 Casey Kane 9 car. This is my favorite diecast of all time. I recently just picked this one up on eBay. Signed right there by Casey Kane, my favorite driver of all time. Uh Budweiser 9 car. This was debuted in 2008. Um after Budweiser left Dale Jr. after Dale Jr. went to Hendrick Motorsports. So Casey Kane Got sponsorship really for the first time in his career. He was a Dodge guy, and like Dodge was always on the sponsorship. So this was first Casey Kane big sponsorship when it was the Budweiser car. However, when I was a kid, I could never pick up diecast because you weren't allowed to buy things that had beer on them when you were a kid. So mm -hmm. um, I never got this diecast car, but I really always loved it. And I finally, now that I can drink, am I allowed to buy this? <laughs> um, so 2008 number nine Casey Kane car proudly sits on my desk. Nice. So, that is my diecast uh, for today. Daniel, you're going to have to bring a diecast next week, man. I will. I might be going home this weekend, so I might be able to bring one. But if not, I'll I'll try to make a target run or something, see what I can get. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, uh, we'll make go ahead. Attempt. All right, guys. Thanks for another episode of Guess That Diecast. Let's go ahead and go into our predictions for next week. All right, as always, Jay, take us through it. Yes, yes. So, after last week, I forgot to change the tally here. She comes, so I added to the tally. Um, <laughs> she comes, so I added to the tally. Uh, so, um, none of us got our NASCAR predictions right at all. <laughs> um, Damn. Uh, yeah, Just proves you how crazy Talladega is. Yeah. Um, I was close with Ryan Blaney. 
I had Ryan Blaney. You were so. very close with Ryan Blaney. Yeah. So I could have had two points. <laughs> but I was the only one that ended up getting points after this past weekend at um, – it's not appearing up here. Let me change this real quick. There we go. Uh, so after this past weekend, I was the only one to get points, and I only got that one point because of Charles Leclerc finishing second, and I had him predicted to finish second in my podium. So I got that one point from that. Um, but outside of that, I mean, yeah, like the totals right now still stand. I just went up a point. I'm at 21. Daniel's at 19. Tristan is at 18. So we're all still. still- anyone's game still anyone's game to the end of this season especially it can especially swing if somebody's championship pick takes home the championship so oh yeah be interesting um but yeah so if you guys want to go ahead and want to get started for this week for predictions i say we start for japan i think we also start for japan and here's the thing about japan I'm excited for this race, and it's not only because I love everything that is Japan and is the one place that I want to go to in my life, like, that, like, is on my bucket list, but, like, Japan's just cool, and I think it's just a cool place, and when you look at the results from last year, this was a pretty good one. I mean... Do I go with the same guy that won last year? That's the real question. That's the real question here. I um, remember new regs too, so. I mean, with the first time that this race was, the last time this race was run, I apologize, Valtteri Bottas won it. And I don't want to go Bottas just because of the year he's had. So I'm going to go safe and I'm going to go that Max Verstappen clinches the championship this weekend. Okay. Um, my s- second, number two, P2, this weekend. <sighs> I think he gets back-to-back podiums. I'm going to go Checo, Sergio nice. Perez. Man, vamos, Checo. And then P3, I think he has a bounce-back week. I'm going to go George Russell. George Russell, okay, okay. Interesting. Daniel. Okay. Daniel. Winner of this race, I'm going to go Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc. Um, P2. I'm going to go Max. For Steppen. Okay. Mm. Then P3. Mm. I think I'm going to go Carlos Sainz. Mm. Nice. I was, mm. I was stuck between him or Checo. Vamos, Sainz! <laughs> I was between him or Checo. I think yeah. I'm going to go Sainz. Okay, so signs. Okay, I'm gonna go with this track is has some pretty long straights. It's gonna benefit straight line speed, so I'm gonna go Max Verstappen. Um, second, I'm gonna have to go Sergio Perez because once again, it's a Red Bull car. This track mm-hmm. is long. It has long straights, benefits straight line speed. So, um, third is gonna be the toss up area because this could go between Ferrari. This could go between Mercedes. And who knows? Maybe after this past week, showing the speed from last week, McLaren. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, McLaren. Like, yeah. After we see them this past weekend at Singapore, we could honestly see McLaren up there if they are on it this next weekend. Let's go with. I'm gonna go with experience. So I'm gonna go to Lewis, honestly. Ooh, Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Okay. A little bit of a bounce back week. All right. Let's go ahead and bounce over to the NASCAR uh, series. Here we are going to the Charlotte Roval. I'm going to mention a couple of road course ringers, guys, that are on the list that I didn't mention um, in the past. So Scott Hecker is going to be driving the number five for Beach of the McLeod. Uh, Andy Lally is going to be driving that 08 for SS Greenlight. Uh, James Davison, resurrected from the grave, is going to be running the 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing, a uh, former IndyCar driver. So I guess now you have four. Wait, yeah, four IndyCar. Yeah. yeah. Go. Let's go James Davison. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Brad, why Brad, did Brad... you count AJ Allmendinger? AJ <laughs> has more NASCAR experience than uh, – Full season. Sh- short at, um, <laughs> short uh, uh, Brad Perez is going to be driving that 35 for uh, Joey Gase, Emerling Racing. Uh 
Austin Wayne Self is going to be in the 32 for Jordan Anderson Racing. They're going to be attempting two cars. Daniel Kvyat, as I mentioned, is going to be in Sam Hunt Racing. Josh Bilicki in the 44. The 48 will be Marco Andretti. Brennan Poole in the 52. Brandon Brown in the 78. That's really about it. But none of those drivers matter because the winner of this race will be AJ Allmendinger. Allmendinger. I think he goes out there and goes back to back. That's my pick in the Xfinity Series. Jay. Um, let me look at this. Let's go. I don't even care. I don't even have to look. I'm going. Oh wait, James Davison's in the 18. <laughs> he goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Mmm. <laughs> mm, that's hard. I don't know. That's kind of hard. Hey, that that'd be a solid pick if you if you pick that. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with them, honestly. Dang Actually, James or Davis. can we make him our group pick? In our group pick? I don't want, I don't want I'm to. Fine that. I'm fine with uh, that. I'm fine with that. I don't want to make him. <laughs> sure. Let's. Nah. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Go ahead and do it. We can have an IndyCar guy be our our group pick in a NASCAR race. Yeah. James Davison. I'm gonna go with. Tyler Tyson, Mike Tyson, Gibbs. Uh, I was thinking basic. that. Very basic, but yeah. You know, that was going to be my pick. So in order to counteract that, I might as well just pick him every week until the championship. Noah Gregson. <laughs> At a road course, though? At the Roval, though. It is the Roval. I don't know. <laughs> Personally, I was going to nominate Myatt Snyder to be our group pick, but James Davison is still... Personally, I was thinking great. about nominating Marco Andretti to be our group pick. No. What? <laughs> uh, what? I'm not feeling but it. But it's I love... Marco. Yeah, and Marco disappoints me. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and go to the NASCAR Cup Series, guys. So this is the most important race of the weekend. Let's go ahead and go through some of the road course ringers that we have on our list. In the 15, Joey Hand, always a contender at these racetracks. Um, in the 26 and the 27, we have two Team Hezeberg entries with Daniel Kvyat and Loris Hesemans. Um, Connor Daly will be in the 50 for the Money Team Racing. Oh. Mike, Ro- Mike Rockefeller will be in the 77 for Spire Motorsports. And Josh Williams will be in the 78 for Live Fast Motorsports. Whew. Here comes the pick. Here comes the sun. doo to doo doo my first pick is going to be the man who owns this racetrack, Chase Elliott. Okay. He oh, owns this solid. racetrack. He owns this track. My solid. second pick is going to be the guy that should have won it last season, Tyler Reddick. You took my pick. Mm. Ah. Ah. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, so my first pick... I, I, I take, don't take, care. take his other pick. Take his other I'm pick. I'm picking this guy every week until the okay. end of the season, and I don't even care if he's going to end up as a championship favorite or not. I'm going Ryan Blaney. Blaney. Okay. My underdog okay. is going to be Tyler Reddick. Okay. Well, my first pick <laughs> is going to be Tyler Reddick. I could have made it my wild card, and, you know, I probably should have based on who I'm making my, my wild card pick. But screw it. I'm hammering it down. Shout out Pat McAfee. He should have won that race last year. He's won it this year. Um, wild card pick. Another person who probably could have won last season. I'm going to William Byron. He needs a win. Good one. Good call. That's a good pick. I, That's a good call, he, actually. He was, he was in that those those three drivers last year that were in contention for the win. It was Tim, Reddick, and Larson. I've got to pick between those three, and I'm not picking Larson. So, yeah, I mean, hey, I don't blame you. Okay, guys, those are our picks for this week. And as always, just a friendly reminder that if Michael McDowell wins a race, Tristan gets a point. <laughs> um, if uh, Cole if Custer Cole wins, Custer wins a race, I get a point. <laughs> And if Austin Dillon somehow miraculously uh, gets a win like he already has this season, then Jay gets a point. Life in the uh, pit lane, Dillon. <laughs> Life in the pit lane. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I like that uh, one. 
Uh, but guys, we got the Roval coming up. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, Jay's going to bring us back to the home screen so we can close this one out. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and close this episode out. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Indie Boys Racing Podcast. Uh, new episodes come out every week, 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social medias at Indie Boys Podcast. Follow the Marion Phoenix at the Marion Phoenix on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, follow Burnout Sports uh, at Burnout Sports on Instagram, at Burnout Sports underscore on Twitter. Um, check us out, burnoutsports.com. Check us out on our old, our own personal social media is me molly's tristing writer underscore daniel's behind the chains or he is daniel cheney 75 on twitter on um instagram instagram and jay over here uh confirmed underscore j or j underscore confirmed he likes to switch him up he's pointing to them right <laughs> now anyway closing this episode out for justin cox and daniel cheney my name is tristan Greiner. have a good one guys let's go roval racing love you Bye. Peace. <laughs> 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 that was funny.